I have had quite a few musicians on WTF uh, since I started the show. I think my first musician was Jack White. I went to Nashville. I went to Third Man Records. I went into his office, and I sat there with him uh, just below a wall-sized picture of the portrait of Charlie Patton and, I believe, a taxidermy giraffe's head. He likes stuffed animals. He loves taxidermy animals. The place is filled with them. I had Nick Lowe sitting right across from me here in my garage, and he played the beast in me. Are you kidding? That was crazy. I talked to Tom York about bad art for a little while. I had Fiona Apple in here, and she was talking about hummingbirds for what I I think was like 20 minutes. I had Jay Maskus sitting right across from me going through his own songbook to pick a song. (laughs) It was amazing, but I think really the the most incredible uh, moment for me music-wise was Iggy Pop was going to do my show. I had Iggy Pop on my show. I had Iggy Pop in my garage. I remember we booked it. I'm waiting for Iggy. A limo comes up. A woman gets out of the limo. She says, I'm the publicist. I go, where's Iggy? She said, he's in the limo behind me. And I said, "What's he? how's he doing? Can he talk? Is he good? And she said, yeah, he's great. And I'm like, awesome. And then the next limo pulls up. And then I see little Iggy poke his head out of the car. And I walk up and I say, Iggy, can I get you anything? And he looks at me and goes, I need to refresh. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. How about coffee or water? Yeah, coffee would be great. And then I walk him out to the back deck where people kind of hang out before they go into the garage. So Iggy just almost starts doing this weird like dance, like a almost like a meditation dance, looking at the sun off my deck going, this feels great. This is great. And then within two minutes of being on my deck, boom, the shirt comes off. If anyone else had done that, you would have thought that's a little odd, but it's Iggy Pop, man. That's how Iggy Pop comes, without a shirt. That's how he does things, without a shirt. So we went into the garage. He sat across from me, shirtless. I interviewed him. It was amazing how lucid, intelligent, and how good his memory was. Just me and Iggy. Iggy shirtless, me wearing clothes. And at one point during the interview, Iggy started tweaking his nipple. I don't know what, how I was supposed to react to it. So uh, I chose not to react. It's a great interview.